Hello and welcome to coverage of U.S. Nationals. Maria Bartholdi in the booth, joined by Pro Tour champion Jacob Van Loon and Drew Bates there on the left side of your screen versus Seth Manfield here in the final round before we cut to our top eight. Drew kicking things off with Allegiance Landing. And it looks like this uh, is an Esper Tokens deck once again. Oh, no, wait. This is the Absan Tokens deck. Absan Tokens. Oh, Ooh. interesting. All right. One well, we have not seen much of. So here's a little bit of a backstory on Drew Bates. He says he's never done particularly well at a GP, never played in a Pro Tour. He says he got 17th at a big block tournament at Gen Con during World Wake. Ooh, throwback. <laughs> so he's like, here I am playing for top eight. Pretty cool. Yeah, kind of awesome. And I mean, this deck is really sweet. I don't know if you guys have played with it, but Fresca Relic Seeker is a very powerful magic card and a card that I expect to do pretty well at the Pro Tour. So can you talk a little bit about this decision to have gr include green over blue? Yeah, so people are playing blue for cards like Search for Azkanta, whereas the green version basically just splashes green solely for Vraska Relic Seeker. And Vraska, really, really powerful with, you know, Anointed Procession, making multiple tokens, great at making those treasures. And the thing about Vraska is it instantly jumps up to eight loyalty. If people are attempting to be, you know... Um, more aggressive. It's really hard to get that Planeswalker off the battlefield. Um, this is the version of tokens that we've seen do well initially on Magic Online. Esper Tokens is more of a breakout deck from this weekend in particular. If you've been playing online this week, you've been losing a lot to <laughs> Absan Tokens. Or beating it. I don't know. So this is a kind of a win and in situation here for Seth. Must win this match. Bates likely in even if he loses here. There is, however, a chance that if Bates loses, he misses out because uh, his tiebreakers would not be quite as strong as Seth's are. There you get a look at Vraska Relic Seeker, a card that a lot of people had been expecting to see in Standard just based on the fact of how absurdly powerful she is. Yeah, jumping up to eight loyalty right away is very, very powerful. Second copy of Legion's Landing here for Drew Bates. Is legendary, but he still gets to create a vampire. Rogue Refiner for Seth. How do you like this matchup? Um, well, I would assume that the Absent Token deck would be pretty heavily favored, but throughout the weekend I've been watching time and time again these really strong players on Team or Energy beating these token decks. So even though the token decks are supposed to beat decks like Team or Energy, I think that you know the story hasn't been fully told and. Uh, People haven't fully fleshed out how you win the matchup as teamer. And as we see more of that um, in the coming weeks, then uh, we may have a better understanding of how this matchup really plays out. If Drew Bates like, assembles his Voltron, it's going to be extremely difficult for Seth Manfield to win, especially in game one. In games two and three, as we saw with Jerry Thompson's match against Collins Mullen, things can get a lot more interesting. So when you talk about assembling Voltron here for Drew, what do you mean? I mean, having Anointed Procession in play alongside Hidden Stockpile. Um, and then, you know, obviously your other token makers become more powerful with the Anointed Procession as well. But, you know, this Anointed Procession is going to make all of Drew's cards, not all, but a decent portion of Drew's cards significantly more powerful. And then he starts gaining life with cards like Anointer Priest, and he just gets completely out of range for the Team or Energy deck and eventually is able to go wide enough to secure victory. Well, Drew Bates has one of those two tools at his disposal now, Anointed Procession hitting the battlefield for him. Getting ready to just make a lot of tokens. There's a look at Anointer Priest. Drafted a lot of decks <laughs> that had Anointer Priest in. In a format as aggressive as that, Anointer Priest was kind of a, it was not a fun, different angle to take <laughs> it was to like beat a, those aggressive yeah, decks. Yeah, a weird, it was like a weird, crazy kind of deck that you built with Anointer Priest and Sacred Cat and all the rest of it. I feel like I had a lot of success with those decks because everybody else was just trying to attack me. And I usually did it when I had life. Oketra's Monument. Ooh, so you just like kind of spew <laughs> creatures onto the board. World of Virtuoso here for Manfield. And yeah. is this, I Who's mean... Who's the token deck? <laughs> Who is? Tell 11, me. 11 energy. I mean, is that a potential line to victory for somebody like Seth? Absolutely. I mean, so the Abzan tokens deck does not create much of an air force at all. So a card like Whirler Virtuoso applies a very unique type of pressure that's really hard for a deck like Absent Tokens to deal with. And this is one of the best cards out of Team or Energy, especially in game one. 
Drew here is swinging in with a vampire token. Seth here, block. I guess this, this likely means there's a hidden stockpile coming post-combat. And there it is, hidden stockpile for Drew Bates. Now has two critical pieces of the puzzle, hidden stockpile, anointed procession. And I think he had a sacred cat in hand. And there she is. And so this is a really interesting interaction because hidden stockpile, it has raids. So at the beginning of your end step, if a permanent left the battlefield, you make a servo. Then you can sacrifice a creature to scry one. So you end up sacrificing a servo, scrying, and then the servo comes back as two servos because of anointed, anointed procession. procession. So every single turn, you're advancing your board state little by little while also controlling your draw with the scry. I'm sorry, it's a revolt trigger. <laughs> <laughs> And here we see that exact line play out. Two servos come in to play for Drew Bates. Seth Manfield has made three thopters. And, and now Drew has enough creatures in play that he can actually flip that Legion's Landing and start getting an advantage off of that with Anointed Procession also. Yeah, and the thing is too, he can just feel free to throw these creatures away just to flip that Legion's Landing because so many good ways of just getting them right back. Sacred Cat comes back, for instance, as two cats. Yes. And with every activation of the Flip Legion's landing producing two lifelinkers, it starts to get out of hand really quickly. So what does Seth uh, want to hope for here? Glorybringer to try and deal with the situation? Glorybringer is a nice one. Um, I don't even know if he's going to exert the Glorybringer, though. He may simply want to just deal as much damage as possible in the air. So... Yeah. He's just going to take down a, a servo, it looks like. But uh, Drew will be able to scry one there. We saw Jerry Thompson uh, with a Glorybringer able to take down uh, some creatures in that earlier match versus Colin, Collins Mullen, which really actually helped him turn the tide in a game that looked unwinnable when he took down that Anointer Priest. Yeah, those anointer priests were gaining Collins Mullen a ton of life, and it looked like he was completely out of range, and then Jerry just worked his way through it by gaining so many cards off that Life Crafter's bestiary. So here is Seth Manfield trying to ride glory bringers to victory as he uh, had seen Jerry do in the round before. He probably didn't see it. He was probably playing some matches of his own. He felt fair. it, though, you know. He felt it. The teamer energy people, they can all <laughs> they just feel it when it happens. The hive mind. <laughs> I mean, so is this Seth's game plan, right, against this deck? What do you want to try and do if you're a teamer? Just say, hey, look, you're going to gain a bunch of life, make a lot of little dudes. I'm just going to try and smash your face until <laughs> your life total is low enough where I can just smash in for victory. Yeah, so something I really like from that play with Seth is that he was able to take Drew off of three attackers. So he minimized the effectiveness of the Legion's landing. Um, made sure it wasn't going to turn into a Danto this turn. And exactly like you're saying, he's trying to kill Drew before Drew starts doing things that are really, really unfair. And he's doing a pretty good job of it. Still a very close game, though. Anybody's ball game. All right, Drew Bates adds two more servos to his side of the battlefield. Passes back over to Seth. Drew at 14. Seth still at a healthy 16. And like you said, Seth Manfield just continues to turn his creature sideways. They're trying to be as aggressive as possible. End this game before those cards get completely out of hand. Seth's just going to attune here. And I have a question kind of like moving forward for a deck like Teamer Energy whom, or any deck of the field really who might be expecting something like tokens to start being played in their local metagame. Um, you mentioned the card. Oh, here's a cast out, by the way, from Drew Bates. Appetite for the Unnatural. Mm -hmm. Now, is that, are people going to start to try and innovate more, more people playing bestiary? How hard do you want to pack enchantment removal for a deck like this? Um, it depends how popular the deck becomes. And, uh, you know, we've been watching Teamer Energy have quite a bit of success against the deck without a ton of sideboard hate. So if cards like Appetite for the Unnatural, you know, if one of those in your board, two of those in your board, alongside a card like Lifecrafter's Bestiary are enough to win the matchup, then you don't really need to devote more sideboard space. 
But if the deck becomes a real, real force in the metagame, then you might want to include cards like River's Rebuke even. And while that may seem a bit narrow, it does a very good job of just completely destroying this Abzan Tokens deck because once they're in the stage of the game where they're scrying, they're not hitting additional land drops and they have a lot of trouble reassembling all of their different pieces onto the board once you cast River's Rebuke. There's a look at River's Rebuke. Some people deciding to put in their boards this weekend to try and prepare for this uh, Tokens matchup. Another Whirl of Virtuoso for Seth. One cast out, one in play. Gains him some more energy, up to seven. Drew Bates down to nine. And that Glorybringer is going to be untapping on the following turn, and that means that Seth will have nine power in the air. There is some lifelink going on, on the other side of the table, but still probably quite scary for Drew Bates. Yeah, without an Anointer Priest, uh, he's got to be a little nervous. Yeah, Neuner Priest, a really key piece to keeping yourself alive when your opponent has a, a bunch of flyers attacking you. Long Tusk Cub there for Manfield passes the turn back over to Drew. Who is uh, living off the top. Yeah, he does have a lot going on just with his board, however. But he can uh, attack with the Sacred Cat, make sure he gains a little bit of life, then he could, you know, he sacrifice the Sacred Cat to the Hidden Stockpile, then he could embalm the sacred cat get multiple sacred cats thanks to anointed procession here's the flip of legion's lanting adanto the first fort allowing drew to just completely power out one ones at will yeah tons and tons of lifelinkers there you take a look at it two and a white tap create a one one white vampire creature token with lifelink how hard uh are the pieces to assemble if you're playing either Obzon or Esper tokens? Well, once you have the hidden stockpile, it's pretty easy to assemble the other pieces because it's scrying you into them. So, you know, finding that first hidden stockpile and uh, just using it alongside chump locks, alongside, you know, just creatures when, you're, when your opponent tries to use a removal spell on them, that usually is enough to put together all the pieces. And the deck has enough defensive cards that you usually have enough time to put together all of your pieces. And you usually see things at least like this in most games. This isn't the, the level of absurd the deck is capable of, though, for what it's worth. Oh, no. <clears throat> like, We've... we'll see Vraska, Relic Seeker at times, making multiple tokens in a turn. Oh, yeah, you're going to get two, two, two pirates with Menace. Yeah. Nice. Nebraska also very good at chopping glory bringers out of the sky. <laughs> She's got a sweet sword for it. You ever just chop a glory bringer out of the sky with a sword? <laughs> hey, it's a planeswalker move. <laughs> Seth Manfield continuing to jam here. All of his creatures hit the red zone. Other than that rogue refiner. A couple of servos will... Give one up for the good here, and block Drew will sacrifice one to scry. At this point in the game, it looks like Drew is kind of sifting through his deck and looking to find a copy of Fumigate. And he's playing three Fumigates. Wow. So it's not unreasonable to think that he'd eventually get to a point where he could find one. He's gone through a lot of cards in his deck. Um, he has all these different scry triggers. Uh, he's only taking five here. You know, Fumigate, you might say to yourself, well, it would be pretty good in this matchup, but isn't it pretty bad for the tokens player as well? Well, the thing about Fumigate that makes it so good in the tokens deck is that the tokens deck recoups that loss so quickly without any resources. Here, if Drew is able to use Fumigate, then he could, you know, just embalm that sacred cat and he gets two more cats and the hidden stockpile triggers and gives him two more servos. And suddenly he's got a huge board presence on the same exact turn that he casts that Fumigate. And that's kind of what makes the, the card so impressive when you're playing this token strategy. And there you see the cat go down for the scribe. Drew moves the card to the bottom. Did he do that during his upkeep or did he... Uh, no, this is main phase. Okay. Embalm. Brings back two cats. 
has moved down to five life. Yeah, and it seems <laughs> like Seth's just going to win in Seth's the air. Seth's got a lot of a lot of thopters, and yep. here they come. They turn sideways. Seth Manfield's going to take this game over Drew Bates. Here in the final round, Swiss, U.S. Nationals. As we said, this is a win and in for Seth Manfield. Needs to win here. Drew Bates could potentially lose and still make top eight, depending on breakers. Kind of awesome there. We got to see uh, the route to victory for Team War Energy in right? game one against this token stack. They need to fly over. They need to apply proper pressure. And he, uh, he was able to dodge that fumigate for enough turns that he, uh, he just took it out. All right, let's take a live look in here. Christian Calcano versus Oliver Tomiko. Both players currently on two losses. Well, and a lot of lands. It's a blue-black control mirror going on here, folks. Yeah. <laughs> wow. I remember seeing this mirror at the World Championship this past weekend, and I think there was something like 40 lands in play at some, at some point, and Jerry was down to the last card of his library, something ridiculous like that. Yeah, at this point, uh, both players worried about decking themselves. I think that's probably the primary win condition for both people at this point. Yes. <laughs> oh, wow. We see a search for his canter. We see a flipped search for his canter. His canter, the sunken ruin there on Oliver's side of the battlefield. Oh, my goodness. When do you, s <laughs> when do you just say, I got to stop trying to draw cards? Um... When it gets to the stage of the game where both people have seven cards, where both people have, are hitting their land drops and you have less cards in your library, then it probably means you're losing. Um, but finding that point where you stop drawing cards is pretty much one of the most important parts of winning this mirror match. And here it seems like Calcano has, has won that war. He, he turned gears faster than Oliver switched. And uh, as a result, Oliver's probably going to get decked here. Does it look like, I can't be sure, Calcano, Calcano's library just there looked like it had six cards or something like that. Oliver, I wonder if it's two. It looked like two to me. So for some people, this is magic at its purest form. For others, just misery. Yes. <laughs> I like this. I, I think magic is a deep enough game where... The fact that you can have things happen that are as interesting as this is pretty impressive. Oh, look at this Ipnu Rivulet activation. <laughs> Torrential Cure Hulk here from Calcano. Essence Scatter from Tomiko. Hieroglyphic Illumination for Calcano. And I was being a little silly, but uh, you're right. It is actually extraordinarily interesting to watch these matchups because you'll see epic counter battles and you have to decide mm -hmm. when is it worth it to fight over something and when do I hold back? All right, well, we're seeing these players scoop up their cards. Yeah, did uh, Kalkana get decked there? We'll check in and see who actually yeah, yeah. took that match or game. So Oliver did actually take that game. Yeah, the, uh, the necessary ability to counter inactivated ability there. Calcano apparently unable to find it. A little bit hard to follow what was uh, in his hand there because he had so many cards. <laughs> Brian David Marshall giving us an update there. Oliver won on decking is what he said. Mm -hmm. The deserts came through. Wow. Just incredible. When you see counter magic on counter magic, it reminds me of the last pro tour in Hawaii when we had uh, some fabulous counter games, control matchups in the top eight. Yeah, a lot of the time the, uh, the first player to do something ends up being the one who loses in those matchups. Discipline. Yes. All right, going to game two here, Seth Manfield versus Drew Bates. Seth up a game. And we'll see what he has brought in to deal with Drew Bates's Abzan Tokens deck. What sweet sideboard tech he might have brought to the table. It looks like Seth Manfield has two copies in the gate, which are definitely going to be great in this matchup. He does not have the Lifecrafters 
bestiary that Jerry Thompson had. He has a carnage tyrant, which is pretty nice because trample allows you to get through sure. a sea of chump blockers. So he'll likely be bringing that in. Hidden stockpile on two for Bates was, is probably exactly where he wants to be. Oh, absolutely. It looks like uh, Seth Manfield ha also has two copies of Slice and Twain. Slice and Twain, all right. Which could be great in a matchup like this. Pretty expensive, but worth it? I think so. And the thing about the Absent Tokens deck is that you know, one, they're expecting their permanents to stick around essentially forever. So a card like Slice and Twain is fine because they're going for the long, long, long game. Once again, Nationals players... Also get a draw a card off of it. If you believe yeah, a card with a decent amount of versatility. Money in this event, you must fill out a w form. One of the things that's important about drawing a card in a card like Slice and Twain is that uh, in the Teamer Energy deck used to recoup all of the cards that it would spend on sideboard tech with something like Tireless Tracker that it would bring in for almost every postboarded game. But it can't do that anymore because Tireless Tracker obviously is not in standard. So now they really, really want to favor sideboard cards that replace themselves or sideboard cards that provide them with extra card draw that they can sideboard in alongside their better sideboard cards for a particular matchup. All right, we have two crucial pieces of the puzzle here for Drew Bates, Anointed Priest, and Hidden Stockpile. And uh, I like his style with all these foils, gotta say. It's a pretty looking deck. Rogue Refiner for Seth Manfield draws a card, gains some energy, throws it back over to Drew. We'll see if uh, turn four will yield an anointed procession, which would really put him off to the races. Yeah, if he has the anointed priest, the hidden stockpile, and the anointed procession all at the ready, then Seth Manfield's probably not going to be too thrilled. I like the chef at Dunes as well in this deck. Yeah, it can take a while to create a big enough board to finish off your opponent, and Chefette Dunes cuts the amount of time it takes in half a lot of the time, so. And there it is! Anointed Procession for Drew Bates. Anointed Procession, Hidden Stockpile, Anointer Priest. Things have got to be looking scary for Seth. Absolutely. But he's going to continue to do what he did last game, which was just smash. In comes Rogue Refiner for three. Yeah, and Drew may fall to 18 here, but he's Probably going to gain a lot of that life back on the following turn. Bristling Hydra, the play for Manfield. Yeah, Bristling Hydra, not, this is not one of the matchups where it really shines because it does not have trample, and Drew can essentially chump block it forever once that attack becomes relevant. If near Deadlands here, the play for Drew. Is that card just included as another way to activate the dunes, or are you looking to throw those minus... Two minus, uh, two minus one minus one counters on something. I think both. Um, the fact that you can use it, sacrifice to the dunes, obviously quite strong, and it lets you use dunes two turns in a row. Um, the other thing, though, is that sometimes your opponent has a particular creature that might be a problem, and the fact that you can use your lands essentially as spells is a very powerful ability. So Drew gaining two life here. The hidden stockpile trigger. Legion's landing in hand for Bates, as well as a Fatal Push. Yet yeah, choosing not to play that Legion's landing here. Perhaps waiting until he has the three creatures to attack with. Seth Manfield continues just to swing for the fences here. In comes the Hydra and the Refiner. Says, you know what, I've got to put the pressure on and I need to put it on now. This is an interesting block here from Drew. Um, Essence Extraction. All right, and he's going to sacrifice a token here. Scry, and then he also has a Fatal Push to respond with. Oh, nice. Yeah, pretty good sequencing. Had to do a lot of work to get rid of this Hydra, but Bates decided it was worth it. It took a couple of cards. 
bunch of mana. More mana than the Hydra costs. This is, you know, some of the best Hydra action I've seen against these token decks. A lot of the time when you're playing this token deck, you kind of want to ignore cards like Hydra. Yeah, I was wondering why he was spending so many resources fighting over it. And uh, it also means that he does not have the necessary attackers to uh, flip a Legion's Landing on the following turn. It's unfortunate for him. Seth Manfield has added to the board with Whirler Virtuoso, which we saw at be an absolute all-star in the last game against Drew Bates, creating all those Thopter tokens. Yeah, I mean, Whirler Virtuoso, again, it's one of the very best cards in the Zabzan token deck. They do not have a lot in the way of flyers, and you can continue to pressure their life total, and they really have to try to race you. And when they have an Anoiter Priest, it's very easy to stay ahead, but if, uh, if they don't have an Anoiter Priest, then the Whirler Virtuoso can end the game pretty quickly. Looks like Drew is using his Ifnir Deadlands here. Try to clear Seth's board a little more, sacrificing a chef at Dunes. Yeah, going to uh, try to get that Whirler Virtuoso off the table. Seth here makes one Thopter. And there's that Legion's Landing. Coming with two life-linking vampires. Both of which are going to gain him a life. Then he's going to make another two servos, gaining oh, him boy. two more life. This is getting gross. And he's jumping right back to 20. And, you know, we saw Jerry Thompson in this position. He was able to come back and win. So Seth not quite out of the woods, though he does not have access to Life Crafter's bestiary. Rogue Refiner and the Thopter hit the red zone for Manfield. Yeah, and I mean, if you're Drew, you might just want to start taking damage because, you know, it might not be overwhelmingly relevant because next turn you're flipping your legion's landing, you're making multiple lifelink creatures, and then you're making even more servos, gaining life off all those creatures entering the battlefield. Well, as it stands, two servos jumped in front of that rogue refiner, and here's Carnage Tyrant for Seth Manfield, one of the cards you mentioned, which might have an impact thanks to Trample. Yeah, and this is one of the major reasons why you want to be... Uh, saving so many blockers because eventually you're going to get to a point where he's going to have a threat where you need to answer it and you need to be able to throw enough things in the way for it to be worthwhile. All right, there is a flipped form of Legion's Landing, Adanto the First Fort. Transforms, Carnage Tyrant will eat an Anointer Priest, which is just fine for Drew. Yeah, Drew can uh, embalm that Anointer Priest, get two copies. Each of those going to trigger off the other, gaining Drew a bit of life. I've got to say, this token deck is, you know, might be just a nightmare to play against for somebody like Seth Manfield right now, but it's pretty cool. It's an amazing deck. Um, this is definitely one of the breakout decks of this week in particular. I think we've seen the deck on Magic Online a lot more than anybody expected to. And as we see here, just its ability to continue to flood the board repeatedly, to scry through its library and find whatever it needs. It's just a really powerful strategy. Um, Fumigate is especially strong. So when you're playing this team or energy matchup, um, a lot of the time when the Absan Tokens deck wins, it's a game where it resolved a Fumigate, and the games where it loses are games where it did not resolve a Fumigate. Um, it's very good at finding the Fumigate, though, because Hidden Stockpile gives it essentially forever to chump block and find that win condition and then it also allows the deck to just refill the board very quickly after the fumigate happens glory bringer here for seth continuing to apply pressure carnage tyrant will swing in as well and this glory bringer important to get at least one of these anointed priests off the table if he wants to be able to uh, chip away at drew's life total yeah, Drew currently at 29. Down goes an anointed priest. Uh, Drew will sacrifice to scry. No other blocks, it looks like. And yeah. Seth passed the turn back. Drew's at 18. 
Drew's life total is healthy enough that he could afford to take that hit of damage. A start to finish in Drew's hand. It's a pretty good one. He doesn't have to go ahead and use it right away. He can wait till next turn to take that glory bringer down. Seth, sh or excuse me, Drew ships in with four tokens. Two f will fall. Trading off a thopter there is Seth. But like you said, anything trading off or dying in combat doesn't matter. Just comes right on back. Yeah, his stockpile just continues to refill Drew's board. And uh, in doing so, it's going to gain him additional life with this Anointer Priest token. It's Embalmed Anointer Priest. So funny. You wouldn't expect a 1-3 to be <laughs> dominating a board the way this Anointer Priest is. Yeah, and I mean, Seth is attacking for a lot of damage at a time, and it just doesn't really seem to be making much of a dent in Drew's life total. Drew's still at 22 here. What can Seth do to kind of grab back the reins of control from Drew Bates in this game? So if Seth can find another Glorybringer and get that Anointer Priest off the table, uh, the Carnage Tyrant would do a really good job of chopping through Drew's defenses. Um, if Drew's total creature count gets low enough, then he'll be drawing off the top and he'll be in a situation where he really just needs to find a Fumigate if he's going to win the game. Carnage Tyrant swings in here for Seth. Unblocked. Will attune. Keep in mind that Drew does have that Adonto, the first Ford available to start cranking out lifelinking vampires as well. Not only do they have lifelink, but that Anointer Priest is going to gain life from them entering the battlefield as well. Yeah, I mean, he's going to go up to 17 here by activating that Adonto. Then he's going to, on the following turn, get to attack with those Adonto tokens. It's going to gain him even more life. Then he can start activating the Adanto again. And, uh, you know, once he gets another copy of Anointed Procession in play, it just starts to get completely out of hand. We saw a tweet from BDM earlier this weekend showing a mirror match of Tokens players with life upwards of 700. All right, well, here's a way to deal with this Anointed Priest. Hello, Chandra, Torch of Defiance. And Chandra, just one of the very best cards in Standard. Negate here countering a start from Drew. Trying to gain some more life off of that priest before it goes away of the dinosaurs, if I may use that expression. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and the dinosaur that's around here is, is staying around here. Oh, yeah. Carney T. Carney T. It's a Carney. Tyrant. Happy to see him this weekend. Yeah, I was surprised we didn't see more of him at the World Championship. I think a lot of people were. I didn't see much on camera, though. Did no, you? No, not at all. Yeah. Wasn't there. Brave of those blue, black, and Grixis control players to play those decks with Carnage Tyrant's existence. But uh, they correctly presume that people wouldn't go that route. Drew here attacking with some servos. Chandra will fall. And here we are going to see a finish. Take down that glory bringer. That's an important one. Yeah. In come two more servers for Drew. Throws it back over to Manfield, who is resting on that Servant of the Conduit and that Carnage Tyrant. And what I believe to be a single card in hand. And Drew has not found a way to activate that Adanto yet. Once he does, he's going to start pulling ahead here. And uh, right now, the story of the game is Carnage Tyrant. Will it be enough for Seth Manfield to win this? Drew Bates currently at 15 life. Any way he has to gain it has been taken away from him. Players, this is a final call to sign up for our 4 p.m. Oh, Seth's got a couple of cards in hand. Oh, what is that card? Do you see that? Looks like it could be an interesting one. Oh, yes. Nissa. 
Ooh, it's a Nissa Stewart of the Welcome, Elements. Welcome, Nissa. Hi. Hi, Nissa. Long time no see. All right, so this is going to come down with a ton of loyalty. And then you can pay zero and you can look at the top card of your deck. And if it's a creature with converted mana costs less than the number of counters on it, you can just put it directly onto the battlefield. Or land or creature. There you see a copy of Nissa on your screen as Drew Bates takes a read as well. Not, a, not all teamer players packing this card. Not at all. And here, Seth Manfield activating the ultimate right away, making two lands into 5-5 five, five elementals with flying <laughs> and haste. Get in! And he is attacking with everything. And this is 15 damage because Drew can only block the tyrant with two creatures. It's going to trample over for another five. And then there's 10 damage in the air, and that's 15 damage. Wow! They had the fumigate, the fumigate, too. Seth Manfield just snatching a win out of nowhere versus Drew Bates. Seth Manfield advances to 10 and 2. Wow. Same record as Bates. Wow, that was really cool. Nissa, sweet sideboard tech there for Manfield. He has two of them. Yeah, walking around the hall this weekend, I've been hearing at Token players just talk about how they've been beating energy all weekend. But every time we end up watching one of these matches, it's a teamer deck being played by one of the top 25 players in the world just absolutely working an absent opponent. Wow. Just like twisting them into pieces. That was, that was a really cool match to watch. More magic coming at you yeah. after these messages. <laughs> 